Eagles. What's happening? Growing up as a kid, all I ever wanted to do was become a professional footballer. It was number one out of the other two dream jobs I wanted to do. I always wanted to be in a boy band, but I can't sing or dance, so I was actually perfect for it. I was just born in ugly bastards. And the other one was a porn star. Sorry. Yeah, yeah alright. So two years ago now, I took my FA Level 1 and I vlogged my experience on it. Fast forward two years and I am now an FA Level 2 coach. A UEFA C licensed coach. And here is my certificate to prove it. So I am now one step closer to becoming England manager. All the gear and no idea. I'm perfect for it. So here's what to expect when you, or if you, take your FA Level 2. After you complete your level one and pay 410 quid, you could take your FA level two. I did both my FA level one and two with Middlesex FA. Other counties are available. I wanted to go back to Middlesex FA because of my coach I had on level one. We became inseparable. We had a love-hate relationship. I mean, just look at that face. How can you stay mad? Hey, Craig. Ha! <laughs> Gay! There are three parts to the course. You're put in a classroom with a bunch of people. You're fighting to beat to get your dream job. The FA don't tell you that bit. It's a little bit like the younger games. You will then be assigned FA tutors who will be judging you the whole way. I had Craig Nicholson and John Whittingham, both really nice guys and very, very patient as well. Both have a variety of football knowledge, but they support shit teams. So they show you a bit of football, you coach a bit of football. Block one is fun, if you're allowed to say that. Block two is where they drop the bomb on you with the lovely project you need to complete to pass your course. They tell you it's eight training sessions with each one of them leading into a game. Eight sessions. It's not exactly hard, is it? You can see Sit down and do that now. Pure fiction. It's fiction. It's fiction. We made it up. We made this one up. It's a made up tale. It's a total fabrication. When really it's 16, as you need to do two different training methods in one session. Think you can get away with doing a fitness session? Think again, sunshine. Fitness don't count, apparently. Don't need it. Not important. <laughs> So really, we're all within a chance of still making it. As I've always said, Fat Fabregas, you will also get an in-suit visit from your coach. Where you'll come along and watch how you teach, coach, the team that you're with. To see whereabouts you are on the course. And then by block three, it's more about your project work. Leading into your final visit from your FA tutor. You will get three years to complete your project from the date you started your course. It's not really hard. You ain't got anything to worry about, really. It's just one massive ball ache doing the project. And level three will be 36 sessions. Now this is based on my experience of my time doing this. I struggled to connect with level one and level two. For me, it felt like the coaching for your level one and two was more about youth level. I've never coached anyone younger than 18 in men's football. Yes, it's building us all as a coach to adapt our style of play, but if there was different age groups for different kind of courses, I might not have seen it as a massive effort. Who knows, level three might be like that because doing all of this while having a full-time job works in 10 hours a day with overtime on the weekends the last thing i wanted to do when i had a little bit of free time to myself was that bloody project you can do it on pen and paper you can do it on a computer system they tell you it's better to do it on computer therefore when you send it into them you can make any changes if you do it on pen and paper you've either got to start rubbing it out or start all over again but with a lot of help from my tutors and some very close friends i don't think i would have done it without their help big nose serge and matt there's parts of the course that i will take into the way i teach going forward from now on there's parts i won't even bother thinking about like how you've got a coach in a certain way you have to do what the fa guidelines tell you to do maybe that's why we haven't won anything since 1966 we suck again you can't really express your way of coaching in the game they teach you more about how to pass than coach on the course kind of like teaching you how to drive once you're passed do what the fuck you like i've already covered it but they say that fitness don't really count as part of the project they say you'll get more from a high intensity game than you would putting on a training session regarding fitness once a week so really the badges are more set out for professional clubs so if this is where the journey ends for me because they look to take people on to level three who are with pro clubs and not so
Sunday League, I thought we lived in a world where we couldn't discriminate. Hold people back. Because the way I look at it, if there's two managers that have both made it to the World Cup final, who both started the course at the same time from level one all the way up to their pro license. Both know how to set each other up, right? They've both been on the same course. How are you going to outsmart the other manager when you both know exactly what you're going to do? It clearly just comes down to who was better on the day. What players are up for it? But if it comes down to, no, it's all about the DNA. If that's the same DNA that Gareth Southgate's learnt about, where he's decided to take 23 right backs to a major tournament, I think I'll give that one a miss, thanks. Because Sunday League managers are the best in the world. We are a one-man band. Semi clubs may get two or three coaches helping them out, an assistant manager, goalkeeper, physio, etc., etc. Taking some of the workload off your formation. Pick your strongest 11. Squad of 16. That's going to win you that game. They ain't got a deal with come Saturday night at 11.59. I'm sitting here with a piece of paper and I've got a squad of 16. Come 10 a.m. the next day, we've got eight people who've rocked up still hanging out of their ass from the night before. Kickoffs in half hour with no sign of the other eight. Then the Texas come flooding through. I've been up all night with the shits. You've got no goalkeeper that turns up, so you've got to kick off the game with 10 men. The rest will turn up when they like, and when you lose, it's your fault apparently. They never have any money for subs. It's always in the car. But was more than happy spending 150 pounds drinking champagne off the arse of a stripper called Chandelier at 3 o'clock in the morning at the local strip joint. I like to see Guardiola coach a bunch of prima donnas on no budget, and who claim if it wasn't for their knee injury, they would have made it pro. And also that one time that they had trials. Your trials at the old Bailey don't count. Let's hope one day clubs realise and wake up and stop giving the same managers who keep getting sacked and recycled over and over and over again a job. Ex-pros don't always prove to be a great manager. Just because you can kick a ball once don't mean you can teach the game. I do encourage anyone thinking about taking your coaching badges to go and give it a go. Or if you're looking to further yourself, which I still am, might not get that opportunity after this video, but you will meet some of the best people in the world who I'm still friends with today. I really hope that this ain't the end for me. I have so much to give to this game. So if anyone's done their level three, send me your projects. I'm sure we can come to a little deal. You know what to do. Ta-la.